In the last lecture, we discussed equivalence relations and equivalence classes in much detail. In this lecture, we'll discuss the final relation, which is partial orderings. Sometimes we may want to take a set and order the elements. An ordering is a specific organization of a set that embodies this notion of less than. Now, technically, the less than symbol is still not a partial ordering, even though it can be used to order elements. Partial orderings, which implement the binary, binary relation, which I'll show you here, looks like this. There we go. This has three properties. The first is it's reflexive. The second is it's anti-symmetric, which we'll talk about in a moment. And the third property is that it's transitive. Hey everyone, real quick, I just wanna mention that this video is a part of a whole course that I made. You can find a link to this entire course in the description below and make sure to click on that subscribe button. So in the last lecture, we've discussed reflexive and transitive. And we also discussed how the less than symbol is technically not reflexive because two is less than two is false. However, we can fix this by looking at the less than or equal to symbol. And so in fact, this is true for any A in, our, in the real numbers or integers or whichever you wanna use in general, this is true for all real numbers, again, integers, whichever universe you'd like to work with. What about the anti-symmetric property? What does that mean? Well, what this means is that for all elements in our universe, for all A and B, that if A is less than or equal to B and B is less than or equal to A, then that just means A and B are equal to each other. Now, this could be tricky sometimes because in the definition of partial orderings here, there is a use of the equal symbol, which is an equivalence relation. It's a different relation. When we say A equals B in this context, though, we just mean that A and B are literally the same element in the universe. Let's take a look at an interesting partial ordering of the natural numbers. So I'm actually going to write here, I'm gonna clear this off. Our universe that we're working in is N, the natural numbers, zero, one, two, three, and so on. We might say that X is less than or equal to, and I'll put quotes here around that to say, this is not necessarily the same thing as less than or equals. This is just a partial ordering. We might say that X is less than or equal to Y or smaller than Y if X divides Y. And we put a vertical line to suggest, to say that X divides Y. So like two divides 10, five divides 10, one divides 10, 10 divides 10, seven does not divide 10 because seven is not a factor of 10. This is a partial ordering. This is a partial ordering because technically for the reflexive property, X divides X for all X in my natural numbers. Uh, every number divides itself. That's definitely true. And then for the second property, if X divides Y and Y divides X, then X and Y are the same numbers. They're the same natural numbers. This is definitely true. So think of all the elements, for example, that divide 10. There's one, two, five, and 10. Now of those, 
which of those numbers does 10 divide? Well, 10 doesn't divide one, 10 doesn't divide two, 10 doesn't divide five, but 10 does divide 10. And so 10 divides 10 and the other direction, 10 divides 10, that means 10 and 10 are the same numbers. That's the second property. The third property is the transitive property. If x is a factor of y, or x divides y, and y is a factor of z, which means y divides z, then x divides z. So again, if x is a factor of y, y is a factor of z, then x divides z. We can see this if we say 2 divides 10 and 10 divides 100. That literally means that 2 divides 100. So notice that this relation is not symmetric. It's anti-symmetric. Again, this property right here is anti-symmetric. And therefore, it's not an equivalence relation because x divides y does not necessarily mean that y divides x. So again, the symmetric property was if x divides y, then y divides x. If that were true, if this were true here, that would mean that um, the, pro uh, the property divides, or the, the relation divides, is symmetric. But that's not true. That's not always true. For example, 5 divides 10 does not mean that 10 divides 5. 10 does not divide 5. 10 is not a factor of 5. Now, you might ask, what is partial about partial orderings? Well, partial orderings don't have to be total orderings. A total ordering means that for any x and y in the universe, either x is less than or equal to y, or y is less than or equal to x. And I'll write that out on the whiteboard here. So in a total ordering, either x is less than or equal to y, or y is less than or equal to x. So this means that x and y are comparable. Partial orderings do not necessarily have to fulfill this requirement. Take, for example, the divides partial ordering. If you take the elements 7 and 13, then both 7 divides 13 and 13 divides 7 are both false. These two elements are not comparable, whereas under the usual partial ordering, less than or equal to, we might say 7 is less than or equal to 13, or 13 is less than or equal to 7. One of those has to be true, and in fact, one of those is true, that one specifically. Total orderings have many interesting properties. For example, they give rise to the concept of smallest, and largest. For example, if I were to give you the subset 385112. 385112. Okay. Uh yeah, 12. What would you say the is the least element? Well, under the usual ordering of less than or equal to, you would say, in this case, 3 is the least element and 12 is the greatest element. What you did is you took the set and ordered it as 3, 5, 8, 10, 12. And then saw that this representation clearly shows that 3 is the least and 12 is the greatest. With partial ordered sets that aren't totally ordered, there might not be a least element. For example, under the divides partial ordering, you might be able to say that if we're looking at the set 10, 2, 20, 100, what's the smallest element under the divides partial ordering? 
Well, this has a least element of two because we can order this as two divides 10 divides 20 divides 100. So, and so this would mean that the least element is two and the greatest element is 100. But if we change this a little bit and throw in a five there, this will throw everything off. You can't be able to determine which is smallest because two and five are not comparable under this partial ordering of divides. You might be tempted to say that two is the least element, but that's because you are ordering the set under the wrong relation. Under the divides relation, two and five are not even relatable whatsoever. We can't tell which one is smaller, and so we can't tell which one is the smallest. Anyways, thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.